so the com so the festival is officially international. We had a company from Afghanistan last time. Oh really? Yeah. Wow, how was that? That's why I was like, oh, I didn't say anything like that first. more friendly. You do I mean? I was eating that bread made me more hungry than I was before I ate that piece of bread. Because I wasn't hungry at all. I've got a tomato in my bag and I was thinking about eating it. Tomato? Oh, that's really sad. Yeah, like, I love tomatoes, but I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I was just saying you're very loud. Is it being streamed right now? Are we live? I was painting with this. Oh my god. But sorry, I was not going to be able to do that. But that's it. Hopefully, I'll never actually hear what you're saying.
How are we doing? Time-wise. We're good. Okay. I think it's mostly just based off the... Oh, okay. So if you're good. Uh, okay. Do you want to go check in with them? I will. Okay. Cool. Once upon a time, there was a woman named Claire. 
Behind a barricaded door, she labored over saucers of soup and pans of pot roast, creating and tasting, tasting and photographing, photographing and reviewing, reviewing and writing, writing for her blog, ClaireCooks.com. In those days, thousands of people journeyed to her site each day to see what she had cooked up. They clicked, they commented, they linked. Sometimes they tried her recipes at home and they would take photographs of it and send her send those to her. These pleased Claire very much. In fact, they pleased her so much that she would click and comment and link back, and click again and link. And then the soup would begin to boil, and she would bookmark for later, and star, and tag. When she returned, her eyes would glaze over at all the stars and bookmarks and tags, and she would click save, and open a new window. Gradually, her readers became hazy shells of what they once had seen. They were strange, coded names. They were numbers, not bodies or faces or smells or tastes or movement. She had lost track, lost touch. Slowly, the color drained out of her vegetables. Her flan flopped, her bread burnt. She singed the edges of her shepherd's pie. Everything tasted like glue. To combat her growing anxiety, Claire updated her Facebook. To feed her emptiness, she gorged herself on Twitter feeds, blogs, news sites, and gazed at reams and reams of email. One morning, she couldn't smell the soap by her sink, much less the sprouts for her salad. Her mind so filled with the buzzing sound of info bits, she didn't notice the buzzing sound of tiny wings in her apartment. The sound moved in her until she browned like a banana. <laughs> the bees are telling me to get on with it. Did I mention they're bees? It was bees buzzing. And the woman is me, Claire. I've been talking about myself in third person a lot lately. I blame Facebook. <laughs> Claire is making a quiche. Claire is confused. Claire doesn't like to fall. Claire likes to stay on top of it all. Claire cooks, Claire writes, Claire edits. This is a collection of Claire's discards. She stacks them up and piles them neatly. Sometimes, before she knows what has happened, they catch the wind and blow all over the internet. And, and then you know what she does? Delete, delete, delete. Modify, polish it up, make a joke. Repost, ready to go. This is a status update, but it needs to be smoothed out into witty weavings of metaphor, pop culture references, sly winks, ready for the banter of her friends to begin a comment on comment on comment on comment. It is what it is. I'll do what it takes. Keep in touch. The bees are getting impatient. Tell us the story.
It took a couple of days before we realized that my cousin Zebulon had disappeared. I come from a large family, and we look out for each other, but we, we also take care of ourselves. At any second, a few thousand of us will be out looking for the best place to find our food. This might make it seem like a flipping mess of chaos, but really it's quite organized. We don't do the whole top-down thing, but we follow predictable patterns. Zebulon was one of the strongest workers in our family. He had a knack for finding really good pastures and then relaying that information back to the rest of us. And then he went right back out again. He wasn't the kind to take much of a break between trips. So at first we just thought he was out on a really thorough scouting. After he disappeared, word got around that he hadn't been working as hard and he'd been acting funny for a few days. He'd seemed drained and tired. He'd gotten lost gotten confused on the directions. And then he flew off and we never saw him again. Usually we don't have time to worry when just one of us goes missing, but then the same thing started happening over and over again. Strong workers would get tired, nauseous, confused, and then fly off at random directions. Sometimes we found their bodies, alone and far from the hive. Usually, they just disappeared. We've survived all sorts of things in the past. Winters that have lasted for years, floods, droughts. Still, this kind of insanity scared me more than the others because it slashed us beneath our defenses. In times of trouble, we can uh, hunker down. But this one, we couldn't figure out. I left because I didn't know how long it would be until I got thrown off track too. I decided it would be better to choose where I was going rather than end up in some place like Antarctica by accident. morning before getting out of bed. Well, actually rolling out of bed. Claire's bed is only two inches off the floor because Claire hates falling. Claire picked herself up and made herself breakfast. Claire won't go into the contents of her breakfast. Of course, Claire isn't actually posting any of these updates anyway, so she may as well note her breakfast. Toast with cinnamon honey. Claire is bored with her breakfast. Everything tastes the same. Claire got ready for work in record time today and found herself staring out the window as they did in the old days when there were gardens outside windows. Only this window just has the news. The country is going to hell. The world is going to hell. The next elections are going to ruin your life. There are no jobs for anyone, anywhere. Claire is going to consider salads. Edible flowers. Chrysanthemums. Citrus blossoms. Daisies, dandelions, daylilies, elderflowers. Hibiscus. Honeysuckle. Nasturtium, rose hips, sunflowers, violets, almonds. Again? Focus, focus, focus. Email sent. I'm ready for my next assignment. Judy's photos. Kelly and me at the beach. Kelly and me at the bar. Kelly and me at Joe's birthday bash. Kelly and Joe and me. Kelly and me.
sorry, lost track of time. Claire has a multitude of windows. The possibilities are endless. Ten servings, eight ounces, one cup, five large, one teaspoon, one pint, just a pinch. Butter, eggs, cream, vanilla, honey, lavender, egg whites, almonds, lemon juice, salt, nutmeg, lavender, almonds. Preheat, chop, mix, warm, melt, stir, whisk, whisk, preheat, chop, melt, stir, warm, melt, mix, mix, preheat, chop, warm, melt, mix, stir, whisk, whisk, cover, chill, transfer, use a sharp knife. Sprinkle, serve, cooking is a verb. heard someone talking on the radio about how there's this little piece of land down deep in all of us that is solely inhabited by God. He was a monk or something, and it was his way of saying that we're all basically good when you get down deep enough. What he didn't say is that there is also this place down deep in each of us which I call Arizona. In the middle of my Arizona <laughs> is a house I dreamt of once. It looks out on these red clay flats. It 
It's empty all around, but you can see the mountains in the distance. In my Arizona, you can push your brother outside so you can watch what you want to on TV. Or maybe you don't even want to watch TV. Maybe you just want to sing or stare at the ceiling or make a fort with pillows. Meanwhile, your brother is standing outside, staring out at this mesa filled with coyotes and javelinas that are all laughing at him. And his only option is to holler back. It's a place where you can get away with things. Foodstuffs.com delivery. Oh, you can just leave it outside, thanks. I need a signature. The other guy just leaves it outside. He doesn't have you signed? No. Oh, uh, policy change. I need a signature. You'll need to let me in. Look, no offense, but I... How about... Can you just pass it under the door? Okay, sure, here you go. Hey, what are you cooking in there? What? It smells good out here. What are you cooking? Oh, thanks. It's a fruit tart. Blueberries, lavender, honey, pears. Wow, it sounds really good. Yeah, it's pretty spectacular. I'd love to try some. Uh, not today. Here's my signature. I have to get back to the stove. You know, you could try adding some nasturtiums to the honey before you mix it. It might be good. That's a good idea. Do you cook? Not really. I work with food. Oh, right. <laughs> Good deliveries. Right. Well, I'll, I'll give it a try and let you know how it goes. Maybe I could even try some next time. Maybe. Um, I could leave some outside for you if you let me know when you're coming. Gotcha. You don't want visitors, I'm I understand. Just, um, just busy. But thanks for the suggestion. No problem. Have a nice day. You too. flower, 8 p.m. deadline, and I have to do it because this is my job, and if I don't, I won't get paid, and then I'll get kicked out of my apartment, and I'll have to live on the streets and eat wet nuts and berries in this city, <laughs> butter, salt, I'm talking to you, Claire, Claire, crazy cooped up Claire talking to bees, baking powder, what's this, coriander? Cloves? Cumin? Everything smells the same. Message from Judy. Claire, wondering how you are, we're worried about you. <coughs> uh, maybe we could get together for coffee sometime and catch up on the important decisions of your life, your loving sister, Judy. Judy. I hope you uh, check your video messages soon because I don't have time to email, but I'm well. I'm happy with my food, my apartment, my <laughs> friends. <laughs> As for coffee, that would be nice, but don't expect anything before the first of next sometime. 
Uh, if you want to get caught up, you can check my blog. I'm working on a new post. <laughs> yeah, can I have an exterminator, please? No. Yes. <laughs> right away. All right, thank you. Who is it? Ace Extermination Services. Oh, thanks for coming. Can I come in? Oh, right. <laughs> uh, just a minute. Sorry, I'm Claire. Thanks for coming so quickly. Sure, that's my job. Now, did you see our ad in Sunday's paper? Uh, no, I found you online. Gotcha. Now, you have wasps. No, bees. Bees? But Definitely bees. Why would anyone want to get rid of bees? Bees are great. Have you even met a bee? You must have wasps. Of course I've met a bee. That's why I called you. It's driving me crazy. Now, did you happen to see whether it had a sleek, shiny body or a fuzzy, robust body? <laughs> <laughs> it was fuzzy and round, like a bee. I think you got the wrong thing. The bees aren't aggressive. In fact, they're really friendly and nice to hang out with. I think you have lost. Look, I don't need a little lecture about bees. Are you going to do some exterminating? That's what you are, an exterminator. OK, OK. Now, is there anywhere that you've noticed a higher concentration of bees? Because if we can find their nesting site, we can pretty much control it, either through removal or spraying. Well, there's really just the one. Just one? Yes, but it's crazy annoying. I can't think or do anything without it always buzzing around my head. One bee? Yes, but I also found a wing in my frosted flakes and an antenna in my sink. This morning there was pollen on my nose. Every time I try to work, I, all I hear is buzzing, buzz, 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 buzz. I don't see it here now. Do you? No, which is strange. It's always here. <laughs> it's probably out pollinating your food for you. <laughs> I get it. Bees are good for Whoa, no need to be condescending. But it can stay outside for that. Thank you. Maybe it's trying to tell you something. A bee. You never know. Fine, look. I'll call you again when it comes back, which it will do, I'm sure. Okay. Have a nice day. You too. <laughs> Sometimes these things can just fester in a wall or a couch and then ignite when you're not looking. What are you talking about? The fire! What fire? We saw a blazing light from street level, so we came charging up. You might not know it, but this city actually has one of the most mobilized volunteer firefighting teams in all of the surrounding counties. We have excellent response times. Now, step out into the hallway. Good, good. No time to collect your possessions. <laughs> My apartment is not on fire. Well, it certainly doesn't look that way, but as I said, there can be these sleep of fires and we don't even notice until it's too late. There's no fire. What do you call that? A lamp. Oh. And that? Well, that's a fire, but it's used for cooking and it's completely under control. It's not natural. Well, what, what, are you one of those people that just orders out all the time and uses a micro microwave? No. Sorry about the mistake. <laughs> no problem. You, you would call us if there was a fire, right? Of course. Because we are your best first responders. Oh. <laughs> Bye. See ya.
SEO results in a Google search. He posted this to Facebook and his girlfriend responded, see that's kind of why I love you. Love. I don't like to fall. Claire watched a hawk kill a rabbit today. Claire wants to put hibiscus blossoms in everything. Claire has a swarm of bees that follows her from day into night and back again. Claire is having very strange dreams. Message from Frank. Why are the bees dying? Are they honeybees? Can I have them? Frank. Good point. Delete. Frank. I think you're right. You know you're kind of... Delete. Honeybees, huh? I thought they were wasps. Delete. I know they're bees. Frank. Thanks for the reminder. What are you doing tonight? Delete. Claire is making a quiche. Claire is thinking about her grandmother. Claire is washing the dishes and washing the dishes and washing the dishes and not thinking about Frank. She's thinking about the bees. She's tiptoeing around the ones that are crawling on the floor. She's dreaming of smashing the ones that are climbing up windows and sucking them all into a shop back where they can be nice and contained and... very good dancer. You danced differently than anyone I've ever seen before. It was like the sway of landing on a pedal, like honey running on a hot day, like being caught on a breeze and soaring toward no particular destination. What, what about this? Like shuddering when you feel spring just around the corner. drop with a dew in one's legs. <laughs> from the hive, etc., etc. <laughs> so it's just for telling you something. Information. Check this out.
How's this? Buzzing and waves. 
We need to hear your soul.
falls down. The mountains split apart. There is no honey left. We dart from pebble to pebble, tree to tree. But now we are kept in boxes, trucked down the road from one almond tree to the next. We rise up. We drink the honey. We drink the mead. They feed us care of syrup, and we grow fat and sullen. Our buzz has become a hum. The faint trickle of the roars we used to give. We lie on our couches, too lazy to kick out our dead, gathering around our little bee ankles. The leaders of today look the other way. They think we will roll over, give up our domain. They brought out the big guns, poison for our friends. We stagger. Artificial sweeteners will not grow the potatoes. We must take up arms. We must spread the news far and wide. Those of you on the rooftops of New York, those of you in the meadows of Vermont, those of you given minutes of freedom from the California trucks, sing at the river, tell of our triumphs, tell how we grow the peonies and the eggplants, tell how we put food on the table. If they want war, we will give them war. We will rise up armed only with ourselves and our ability to fly away. A honeybee strike. Come together. Fly to New Zealand, Australia. Follow me. Follow our ancestors. Search your hearts. Do not tarry. Gilead stayed behind to watch the tomato farm. Dan, who walked to sea, never returned. Asher settled into the strands of a fraying carpet, hoping the daisies would turn real. Nathalie told jokes, looked the other way in denial. Zebulon flew up, up, no return. We will work, and we will see no reward but the continued existence of the world. The stars will continue to shine. The floods will continue to rise. We will stay the course. We live in our tents, our communal yurts, emerge to bring blessings. They ask of us water. We give them honey. Come back to the world of touch, we say. The world of juicy, misshapen tomatoes. Stop eating cardboard. Engage with the world. Take on the commercial farmers. Take on the incessant buzzing distracting us from our tasks. Look out the window, see the red clay flats. Hear the hooves of time. We think we will be okay. They've found workarounds with their pesticides and trucks, the chemical engineering, and looking the other way as we perish. But they will perish as we perish. And we will turn to the sun. We fly onward. Pack your bags. We will rest for 40 years.
Yeah. Yeah. Let's start. Hey, I have a question um, for the um, talk back. 